everybody, and welcome to a really fun discussion, at least we hope it's going to be a fun discussion, of Dead House Gates by Stephen Erickson, book two of the Malaz and Book of the Fallen. You can see three of our four noobs are here. Ian's on his way. He's dealing with some sick children, so he'll be with us soon. But you see Alex is back. Jordan is back. I am back. We are the noobs. And for this book, we are happy to have Alan from the Library of Alexandra here to discuss Dead House Gates. So we're going to go ahead and get started. If you're here in the chat, just drop a, hey, how you doing? If you have any questions, you have any comments, please drop those along the way as well. But let's just go ahead and get started with just overview of what we thought of the book especially coming out of Gardens of the Moon, because that's what I'll talk about specifically. And then uh, we'll start talking about more specifics about it. So, uh, Jordan, do you want to go first? What was your overall you know, reception of Dead House Gates? Sure. Um, I'm Jordan from Jordan Reads. Um, just a quick uh, sidebar really quick. I am uh, doing this from a hotel room with no microphone or anything and hotel Wi-Fi. So this might get weird. Um, but anyway, Dead House Gates, I... Really enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, I I know some people find the beginning kind of slow, but I didn't feel like I had that problem. I, I flew through it, um, and I think the last 100 pages were absolutely buck wild. I read it all in one sitting. So good. Absolutely. Alex? Yeah, so um, this was the first out of so far on this read along, it's only book two, but the first one that I was re reading for the first time, Gardens of the Mood was a reread. So I went in with expectations of, okay, we're going to get all these new characters and this new part of the world and we're just going to be thrown in again. And so it did take probably a little bit to get adjusted to it, but it wasn't anything super harsh or I didn't have a super difficult time trying to, um, you know, get used to all the new characters and POVs and everything. And I ended up really enjoying it. I do think that the back half of it was stronger for me than the first half, but I, there's nothing really in the first half that was the cause of that. I just thought the back half of this book is lights out. I, there are so many amazing scenes in that section of the book. Uh, between Gar Gardens of the Moon, I I don't know. It's so different. This like felt like a much more emotional book than Gardens of the Moon. Gardens of the Moon was throwing a lot of stuff at you in your face like here's all here's what you're in for with this series and dead house gates kind of diverted everything to a whole new you know type of story and kind of felt a little bit easier to follow even though some of the stuff was there was a lot going on that went way over my head on the first read so yeah i'm excited for this discussion it's going to be good to definitely talk through a lot of what happened in this book yeah i agree i agree with both of you i love this book i I didn't love Gardens of the Moon. I was trying to be as positive as I could in our last discussion, <laughs> but uh, I struggled a bit with a lot of the confusing aspects of it. And Dead House Gaze, I had none of that. Now, I did take some notes, and I took notes through the first book of the four books. Basically, I wrote down characters and just wrote down where they were and like where they ended each, each of their portion of the chapter or whatever. And it really helped me just understand what was going on. And then when we talk about characters here, having Fiddler's Group in there helped me a lot, too, because it kept the story pretty grounded. Yep. Just having that group of four initially until Kalam does his own thing, that four people together that I knew, and it just had something to that was familiar. And originally, that was my favorite story group. It wasn't my favorite by the end. I had some others that superseded that. But I really enjoyed this book tremendously. And... I was nervous going in. I was nervous because I didn't love Gardens of the Moon as much as it seemed everybody else did. And I was also nervous for the military fantasy aspects of it because that's not always my favorite thing. But when it's done as well as it was in here, I mean, <laughs> why are you reading this series? <laughs> <laughs> they talked me into oh. it. <laughs> Alan, Alan, you've read it like four times now. So um, I have read Dead House Gates several times. Yeah. That's true. So what's what's your thoughts as someone who obviously is our expert here on the panel to talk about this? So, program? I mean, I, like I, I wasn't in love with Gardens of the Moon either. And it's still still Gardens of the Moon isn't one of my favorites. Um, uh, I I eat, sleep and breathe the glossary, uh, the, the dramatis persona in the front and the glossary in the back. Philip will tell you. Just let it flow over you. <laughs> Just like, don't, no, screw that. Consult the glossary and dramatis personae at all times. That is that is how I keep crap straight. And yeah, reading it again, Mal, like there's no book on um, there's no Malazan book that I did not enjoy more on reread. That doesn't mean you don't understand. It's just like once you understand what's going on, like everything just 
there's just more connections to make and it just makes more sense. Um, so I enjoyed Dead House Gates even more on the reread. But Dead House Gates, first of all, I like revolt like like I, I tend to like the books that take place in the desert continent here for some for some reason um but i like you know re rebellions against empire i like fighting withdrawals um and so i liked this one this was the first one this is where i was sold someone else said um that this particular book was when they they, they had they had a hook for life this was the first book that like just hit me in the gut and it's not what a, a lot of people is but for me like i was like Okay, like all right, like 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 I was I was very very emotionally invested in this one, and like you said, uh, Josh Fiddler and Fiddler and Callum, and I know it's Callum, but I'm gonna say Callum, um, are were my anchors from the previous book, and so like I love Fiddler. Fiddler's one of my favorite characters, you know, in the series. So I love Fiddler. I love getting to hang out with him, and you know, I don't understand half the stuff, and I don't I don't love everything that's happening, but I do like, you know. I just I just love this book. Like I love the actions that happen in this book, even if every character in this book I don't like. Like I would I would be willing to say that I like more characters from Gardens of the Moon than I do in this book. But I like I would agree plot. with that. I like the plot yeah. and the characters I do like in this more. Like I love Fiddler. I love um I love yeah. uh, uh Callum's great. Um and then of course, as anybody's ever watched me talk about Malibin. <laughs> <laughs> Coltane of the Crow. <laughs> uh, you don't understand. Like I, it and it came out of nowhere. Like I was just like, okay, this guy's cool. And then by the end, I'm like, why is this my favorite character? Like, why is this one of my favorite characters? I did a, like a top, top ten protagonist video like two years ago, and freaking Coltane is on there because he's just one of my favorite. So, so yeah, I I love this book, and I especially liked it when I reread it. Um, but this again. You do not have to read these books more than once to understand and enjoy them. Um, you can, um, as you know, that helps many, many experiences are improved once you've reread it, um, especially if it's, you know, dense and doesn't, you know, come out and say everything. Um, but I mean, I should understand everything like path of hands. Who knows? Consult the glossary. <laughs> nice. The glossary <laughs> tells me what it is. Moving on. You know, that glossary is your best friend. I don't care if it's in the back of the book, freaking doggy or that. And this is also, by the way, the best version of this, this wonderful. Oh, MMTV. the mass market. I have, the, I have a really beat up copy of that somewhere. This is my second somewhere version of this here. book. The, other, the first one does not have a cover because <laughs> it's long. <I'm> loved. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is a perfect segue into character. Uh, we'll save, let's save Coltane for last. So let's talk about each of the character groups as a good way to kind of talk through this book. And we might as well get get a, a controversial Alan op opinion right away. Let's start talking about the Felicin and the Haboric and the Bodden group. Let's talk about them first. Um, who's going to start? Who wants to start? Alex Jordan, you want to start? Because I know Alan. I'll, I'll, I'll start. Uh, I think <laughs> that um, I think at the beginning. For, at, the, at the beginning of the book, I thought Felicin's um, storyline was the most intriguing for me because of the prologue. Um, I thought the prologue was really fun, and I was really intrigued by her storyline at the beginning. And then she just got more and more annoying, and I do understand. I know Alan will also go into this because we Here briefly come, talked about it. <laughs> I know. I get that she went through a ton of stuff, but I think what we what I struggled with is that we didn't get to see what she was like before. We just saw her dealing with some hard stuff. And I, 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 I respect some of the things she did to survive. Like, I get surviving is hard, and she did what she had to do. But by the end, she was just so mean. <laughs> I was like, why are you being so mean to the people that are trying to help you? You're being so mean. Um, the whole, the, all the magic involved with Hebrick or however you say his name, I thought was super cool. Um, like when he touched that pillar or whatever, uh, I thought all of that was really cool. Um, and then what's the, uh, the other guy's name? Bodden. His his big reveal, I didn't find that cool. I think it was I, like I think it. it was interesting, but I wasn't. We're, like, we're just going ham on spoilers, right? Like there's not we're not. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, okay, just, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, by the way, there's spoilers. Just make it short. Yeah, this Why is, would this anybody be tuning in if they hadn't read it? Like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> um, 
but yeah, that that reveal that he was uh, part of whatever I can't remember any group names or people or whatever, but name, y'all know what I'm talking about. Whatever um, the old claw. I, yeah, uh, I thought that was like fine. I, I guess I think I also. I had to consult the glossary at that point because it was like the big reveal and I was like, I don't know what that means. So I was like trying to figure it out. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, so overall I did like some of their scenes because I feel like like seeing um, uh, the minds they were in, that was like an interesting setting and stuff. And I enjoyed reading um, from what their group was doing, but I don't necessarily love those characters. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It is a self-fulfilling to- uh, cycle of toxicity, which is why it, it is really- unpleasant to read. I don't want to yeah. spend time with them. I don't yeah. spend, like, I don't like people like that in my real life. And, you know, like, these people are also not real. So if yeah, I, give them, less, like if I give them less grace than I would a human being, that's because they're not real. I'm very frequently rooting for the person that is killing everybody in fantasy, but not in and real life. And there's people that exist because that it's fiction. very tra- there's people that go through very traumatic things and are still sure. nice people. So sure, sure. Oh, like, yeah. I just anyway, I'll save. I'll save my vitriol. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if it gives her a buy for sure. Is is yeah. the thing? Um, I mean, there were some good discussions on on the grimoire um, around this topic a couple weeks ago, but um, for me, I I found her insufferable the whole time. And I was uh, initially, I was trying to understand her, how she was just doing anything to survive, but then it just, it just kept getting darker and darker. And I just had trouble rooting for her, but there was the one moment at the end where she was taking care of that orphan child and she named her Felison, hoping that she wouldn't have to endure what she went through. So for a minute, like I had a little bit of glimmer of like, okay, there's still some, some humanity in this character. Um, but that was one small glimmer in the midst of everything else that, that she did throughout the book, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I didn't like her the entire time, but I definitely think I enjoyed her more than it sounds like Jordan and, um, uh, Josh did. And I think it's just, I was kind of surprised at how many people came out against how much they hated her. So act so aggressively when we finished the book and that's totally fine. Uh, but I think during the beginning of the book, she was like kind of the new character that I got attached to quickest just because we're kind of starting I off did the book too. with her. Yeah. So out of the new characters, I got invested in her character very quickly. And I agree that I wish we had, it would have helped to have more context of who she was before. But I think that because she was so young, I was kind of like, okay, like I uh, was okay going to go see, uh, watching her battle all this stuff trying to deal with all this like heavy adult traumatic things that she's encountering along the way and watching her kind of just descend more and more into this darkness that she's finding herself in. And then I enjoyed her storyline because I do think that it looped in a bunch of characters and big moments in the story that she was a part of. So even if it wasn't necessarily her, it looped in a bunch of characters like you were talking about Haboric and Bowden and Culp had a few scenes that were like really cool. And there were a lot of big magic scenes that got looped into Felison's POV and plot yeah. line that I, um, you know, thought were awesome. So I think on the overall grand scheme of characters, she wasn't my favorite. By the end, I was annoyed. And I really just wanted to get back to the Coltane and Chanted Dog stuff because once you get to that part of the book, it was hard not to want to get back to there and Absolutely. everything else that's going on. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think she was just a really easy character to get invested in quickly just because of what she's going through. But as it went on, uh, it definitely was, she went lower and lower down the totem pole. For me. <laughs> You're right too about how when the, the chain of dogs really starts for me getting really, really interesting. That's all I wanted to read. Um, which again, for someone who's not a big military fantasy person, I yeah. really enjoyed that. Many so people, for many people, the chain of dogs is their least favorite storyline in this book. Wow. I, no, I don't understand That's that as a person, but um, it is for some people. Hmm. I, w- I will say, and we'll get to them, I'm sure. I, I don't want to derail. But I will say that when it comes to the Chain of Dogs, I do think I preferred uh, Duiker or Dyke, Dyke, Dyker, however you pronounce her, his name, um, the most. I, I, I know, like, Duker. Coltane. <laughs> Duker, like, I know Coltane, I like, I love Coltane as a character, but I think just because he had, I mean, he, had, he was such a great character for the amount of lines that he had and obviously the final scene that he was in, but... Alan's about Duiker to kick you was, out of the stream. I know. <laughs> okay. so I, I love, love me some I like Duiker. That 
He stands there and writes crap down. That's what do it. I know, does. but he's well done. He's... Thanks for saving us, boss, with your freaking book. You are he ungrateful, Alex. <laughs> no, trust me. I love Cold Tate. I'm just saying that there's. I liked. No one ever talks about Doiker plot in the chain dog stuff. And I, I like usually talk about Doiker. Now I'm not going to because I have to counteract your there. your your slander. There. Okay. Can't. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, Mapo in a car him and Pus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mapo in a car him. Oh my gosh. Okay. Are we still talking about Fellison? Yep. Yep. You're up. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I think Fellison is a great character. Um. But I don't like reading about her. And okay. So a lot of people probably like not a lot, but there are there is a certain subsection that doesn't like Fellison because she's a girl. Like, and that is true. I mean, that's the reason that that uh, female authors continue to publish under either male names or initialisms, because it's a fact that that exists, right? Um, that, so, so there is an argument sometimes that goes around that if Fellison were a boy, he, he would not be so hated. Um, maybe that's true, but not by me. I hate obnoxious boys in my book store. <laughs> I just finished a book that had two unpleasant male characters, and I hated them also. I don't like unpleasant people, really. Like, I don't like them in my life, and I really don't like them in my books, especially when I'm not supposed to be rooting for them to die. I'm okay if I get to root for them to, like, get their comeuppance. Like, that's fine. But by the end, like like, um, like you said, Josh, with, uh, with uh, Fellas and Younger and, you know, Fellas and taking up the, taking up the mantle of whirlwind with Liamon and, and Toblakai and stuff, like, like that, I can get more behind that because now at least we're channeling, we're channeling that anger and rage and hurt into something that I can get behind other than what if we all just shot ourselves in the foot while trying to survive in the desert? What if we just didn't work together? So we all died out here. Um, yeah, and very so, nihilistic. Uh, yeah. And Heber yeah, Heber's, not, Heber's not really not much better either. He's just like, it's like, what do you, what is your purpose, bro? Like, Oh, I thing. literally, I had no idea what his motivations were for like the entire book. And that Jade stuff with the touch and the Jade thing. I finished the series and I, I still, <laughs> I still have to read stuff to kind of understand it and ask people like, Hey, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> um, so don't worry if you don't understand it. Just be like, eh, whatever. Let's move on. Um, and Bodden is like, Bodden, you're dumb. Like, go punch something. Go stack. Go, go, go kill somebody. Like, ugh. Um, so their storyline, I did like, I liked it more when they were in the Otateral camp. Um, yeah, I did too. Once they got out and just were kind of wandering, I'm like, what if, yeah. what if y'all all just died in the desert and I didn't have to read about y'all anymore? <laughs> Um, and they, they didn't. And then, you know, we got to, we got to, uh, now with her storyline, Culp biting it, I went back yeah. and reread. Like I just read past and then I had to go back and reread it the first time because this is really the first time other than Lauren bites it in book one, right? Yeah. Adjunct, mm -hmm. adjunct Lauren. Yeah, she bites it. But I kind of knew that. Culp had been like kind of built up and I'm like, Oh cool. Yeah, Culp was with them. Like, I loved them when Culp was there and then Culp just gets eaten by rats. <laughs> and I was very, I was, I was like, hold on. Did I read that right? And I kept waiting for Culp to be like, Oh, it was an illusion with my menius magic or whatever. No. Old buddy Culp that I got. Just, just got dead. By rats. <laughs> so like, <laughs> Grillin is terrifying. Like Grillis or whatever his freaking name is. Grillis, that may be the son of Xenophon. What Grillin? Whatever the rat guy name is. Um Grillin. Yeah, it's Grillin. Yeah. So that was when I was like, okay, so I guess unfortunate. I guess characters that I that I think are major can just die in a paragraph. Like, I guess that can happen. Because you know, still getting your grips on on what Malazan is. Because this is also before YouTube, where everyone talks about you know all the stuff that happens all the time. I didn't know. I had never heard the word compassion before uh, before BookTube. And you know, you ask people what Malazan is about. Oh, it's about compassion. Get, what? Get how skates is about a, is about a freaking rebellion that uh, that an empire is trying to put down. Um, so book three is more of that. But um, but yeah. So I didn't love their storyline, uh, but I did like where it ended up. Like I did like where it ended up. Um, and I just 
like, I understand that hurt people hurt people. And I do. That's why I think she's a good character. And I also like that she's from the Paran household and that Tavor is the, is the new adjunct. Yeah. Um, you know, I would have loved more of the, like someone said, if there was a movie, it would have to be the Paran family beforehand. Like I would love yeah. to have yeah. gotten some of that. Oh, I would cool love connection. that. And we get like a couple scenes from Gano's about, when they about like when they were younger or whatever, but it's not it's not very much. Um, so you know, I love that opening scene and Tavor. Yeah, I didn't really understand the first time I read it why Tavor had to had to throw Fellas into the wolves. And then I guess I guess Bodden explains it like, oh well, I'm supposed to bring you out, but you're too drunk on Durhung um, yeah. that you wouldn't come out or whatever. But I was just like, why not? Just use your power as the adjunct to not have her be killed. Why not secret her away? Yeah, to... it kind of went over my. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, that's whatever, fun. whatever. It doesn't matter. I just go with it. Um, but I, I mean, I think there. I think she's a great character. I just didn't love uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, this Hi, isn't Jimmy. my channel. <laughs> like you're, you're disrupting other people's channel now. <laughs> um, so I didn't. Uh, it, it's not my favorite storyline. Cool. Um, yeah, that's, that's where I landed. I just don't like, I just don't like Felicity. And I think a lot of the, a lot of the fervor as, as Malazan has gotten more and more popular on, uh, on BookTube, I think a lot of the, the like die hard, like you must like Felicity stuff is, is kind of tempered by, you know, regular people who are picking it up for the first time who was like, I don't like her. Her. she's mean because that's what i thought jordan that's literally the words i say she's mean she's mean she's mean. And she's mean to people who are trying to get her out of the desert like that is what they're trying to do now they're douchebags too but it's like everyone like it's just it's just mean people being mean to each other all three of them they deserve each other enjoy the desert the whirlwind <laughs> <laughs> and some maranth munitions boom that's what i want that's what i wanted for them to do step on a step on a freaking cusser be done so that's my thoughts on, on those guys. <laughs> <laughs> not not a strong opinion at all. <laughs> hey, let's go to uh, let's go to Mapo and Acarium next, since that kind of came in there. Um, I like the duo, but I I just wonder. I mean, Alan, you can tell us without spoilers. I assume there's more of these characters because that couldn't have been the end. Yes, of the okay. there is more, and yeah. I I I like them more later. I okay. do not. And have never liked them in this book because it is them walking around looking at old crap. And that's all they do. And Mappo being like, oh, no, I can never tell him what happened. Oh, the secret I must keep from my friend. And Akarium being like, oh, this looks familiar. Did I build this? <laughs> this giant clock. Is this who who built this? And Map was like, no, he must never find it. That's all it is. It's just them, it's do it's them doing their their ruins tour. It's like they went on an educational tour and they paid to go look at a bunch of old crap that's crumbling. For a millennium. <laughs> I refuse, I refuse to believe that people find that interesting in their first read through. I think people like it because they've read the whole series and you know, like Ikarium and Mappo, and that's fine. I like Ikarium and Mappo also. Um, I think their their sections are not my favorite in in this particular book. It's like, oh my gosh, it's just nothing but let's look at old crap and then let's make it even worse and have them hook up with pust and then <laughs> look at old crap there too. Yeah, right. I feel like I feel like their whole relationship also a lot of this book for me what suffered a lot was the hype of it and like i hear people talking about this duo all the time yeah, and no. so i came into it yep. really excited and i was like i guess <laughs> I was like yeah. like i did like the relationship but everyone's like they're the best duo in fantasy and i'm like are they like, i just think off this book forget alone, yeah i think people forget that <laughs> the experience of seeing them for the first time contained is not yeah. the same after you've read the whole thing like yeah yeah and, and and that's a natural that's a natural thing to do. Like it's not it's not really people's sure. fault. Um, but yeah, I was excited yeah, I think... to uh, see them just because Jordan, you just said everyone always talks about this duo. So when they finally showed up on the page, I was like, oh okay, I recognize these names at least somewhat. I think, uh, and it was 
cool following them for a little bit, but I do think that it got repetitive in the sense of what they were doing and what they were looking at. I will say of the two, I de- like I liked Mappo's internal struggle of having to decide, oh, how to be how to support this friend that he's been following for you know however long, hundred hundred years, thousand years, and trying to remind him of stuff that he's like things that he did in the past while also not telling him all these things that he did and trying to determine the amount of information he can, you know, let out. Uh, I thought that was interesting. And I think that in future books, like you were saying with the whole series context, there will probably be more there that will hit me harder. But I think on the first read, it was really interesting. And then I just felt like every time we started going back to them, I was just like, Oh, they're still looking at, (laughs) they're still looking at stuff. (laughs) I did like I did like the duo because I knew going in I just have watched enough of these spoiler free chats to where there's all these duos in Malazan and this was one mm-hmm. of the ones that you know like Jordan I heard about coming in I I did enjoy Mappo's kind of when we found out what he was doing for the most part so I'm intrigued to see where they go but um, yeah it's it's just a it's an interesting duo that. I don't know. I think I liked it a little bit more than everybody else. <laughs> it wasn't my favorite. I didn't hate it. I didn't I did, hate it. I, I didn't, just didn't it think it lived up to the type or to the height. I also don't. I know Alan, like in the same duo with them, Iskro Pust. I know Alan doesn't like Iskro Pust. <laughs> he never bothered me in this book. I can see oh. why, but I, I'm just saying, I never was like, God, oh this gosh. guy, racist guy from these from this book. I just, he was fine. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I thought just he, like, was, he was just there. If freaking Mappo or Aquarium had he just like, like the shank the pucks wizard, right wizard, there, yeah. I would have like loved them. <laughs> I would have raised them like <laughs> top tier. Incredible. Just kill that old man in his house. Done. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, let's talk about Fiddler's Crew. Because I think all of us really enjoyed them, especially early on in the book, as something to be anchored to. Um. Yeah. I know for me, especially going in with a little bit of trepidation into this book, um, as far as how I thought I was going to understand it and enjoy it. And I really liked Fiddler. It was interesting. In the early part of the book, Fiddler's group was my favorite. By the end, the chain of dogs ruled everything. But um, I really liked them. I mean, is that kind of what everybody else feels about that group? I, I really, I, I kind like of liked totally Fiddler good. being on a, almost on a quest, you know, trying to find the, the dead house. And I, you know, I love quest fantasy, so. It was a way to find a little bit of a different slant in there, I guess. What like is the most Fiddler, digestible to follow? follow what's his though. actual reason for being there? Like, what's like, what is? Why does he actually go there? Like, I know he ends up. They're they end taking, up following. Uh, they're taking Absalar. They sorry, Absalar back to. Yeah, apparently, like where she came from. Across seven cities. Yeah, and then they're using that along the way to try to have as an excuse yeah as for column or kalam cities. to go and try to yeah they want to kill the yeah that's right that's right, that's right. it's it's yeah. to, it's to kill the empress yeah uh i like them the whole way through i they were it was i didn't know we were going to see repeat characters in i didn't this book. either so I was when surprised. i saw that i was super excited and then i just consistently loved their storyline the whole way through and it did feel like the most digestible in the sense of what their purpose was and kind of what was going on um from chapter to chapter kalam Ka- or kalam or you pronounce it it's did have some moments where kalam. okay kalam did have some moments where you know it kind of got a little bit i was confused what yeah, was, his going was on, a but, little more confusing yeah yeah but the main crew fiddler's crew was was awesome i loved it and everything in the the dead house so speaking of kalam what did we think of kind of the end of his arc. Cause I mean, his arc is really just, he's going to go kill the Empress and then he doesn't. <laughs> what did, what did we think about the ending of that? Um, I initially, I, I felt personally, I felt a little let down because we had that crazy great action sequence with like all the ninjas and everything, <laughs> the assassins right before that scene. And then he finally gets in there and then they just kind of talk and then he changes yeah. his mind. Yeah, I that, was actually that's, that's always been a stick, yeah. in, like a like a, a thing in my craw. I mean, they explain it, or someone in the chat will be delighted to explain it to you. <laughs> um, yeah. I was gonna say, <laughs> I when I got to that part, I was let down, 
And I remember I was look, w- watching some, I was watching like Phillips chats and stuff to try to see if they talked about it. And I, I got what w- I understand the defense of like, Oh, he realizes that taking her out doesn't solve anything. Like they're just going to put someone new in and the empire is still going to be like, Lessine doesn't care about him. Um, well, and she's there's a not few there that, anyway. Right. Like, isn't she not, yeah. she's not actually there. So it wouldn't have mattered anyway. True. Yeah. yeah. I think like, I don't know. It's both. Uh, it's a like a double edged sword. I I enjoy I enjoy the overall message of like this. We're all just cogs in the wheel. This giant empire. But at the same time, it would have been cool to see him exact revenge and like go actually kill her. But wouldn't have solved it. It did feel anticlimactic. It was kind of yeah. like oh, <laughs> we've been like following him this whole time for him to do this thing, and then he was like, mm, nah. Yeah, I am. Um... I uh, yeah, like I want like I hate Lucene. Like so I wanted like I wanted I just wanted him to shank her. Like mm-hmm. I hate Lucene. Um I hate that she killed she Kellen Bed. Like I just hate it because I love crazy Kellen Bed. Um and he didn't. And I'm like, dang it, what like what are you doing, Callum? Like what like what what was your purpose? And also, why yeah. is there another dude named Pearl when there was just a demon named Pearl in the previous book? That was so yeah, confusing, was confusing to me. <laughs> I was like, why is it why this is a very common name? Um, but Fiddler's Crew, I really like because I love sappers. I've always loved sappers. I love, I love the 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 tunnelers, the miners, like the you know the 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 wall bringers, downers. Um, so I love sappers, and so I've always liked Fiddler and his Moranth munitions. I love the explosions. I don't know how they get knocked around so much and don't get blown up by their own munitions, but I don't care. I don't care. Fiddler tossing a cusser into the whirlwind, whatever. Boom! <laughs> like, I'm okay with it. Like, when Custer's just level everything, I'm so happy. Like, I'm just so happy when they start throwing m- munitions because they can't fire them from their, their crossbows anymore. Um, Crocus, shut up. Um, Absalar, Absalar's fine. Like, I like Absalar. I like Sorry. Um, I just need cr- Crocus, whatever, Crocus. Like, I'm too old to like Crocus. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's, he reminds me of my students. It's like you're a dunderhead. Stop. Um, I liked him in the first book, but I didn't like him. In, well, I kind of liked him in the first book. Now I think about it, I liked Mar- him a little better in the first book. Marilio, <laughs> I liked him more in the first book. Phoenix in crew. Marilio is my favorite. I love Marilio. Yeah. He's the the foppish duelist. But yeah, I, I, Fiddler's Group. Fiddler's Group is my second favorite of them. I, I and then the Path of Hands, like. It gets a little confu- it got a little confusing to me, like at the end, because you know, I was like, what's going on? Uh, why is it eating a carium? Or why is it trying to eat a carium? Or like I was like, what's happening? Um, but all of the shape changers were freaking cool. Yeah, like, so I like, cool. I like that. A lot. And, yeah, yeah. Um, I talked then- about it in our chat for the last book. But still in this book, the magic is some of the coolest magic uh, like oh, yeah, in it's, fantasy. It's so cool. Very I don't get half of it, but I'm just like, this yeah. is dope. <laughs> the realization at the end when it reveals that Kellenved, like has been through Iskral Puss redirecting the path of the hands to like, you know, yeah. screw out screw over all of these all of these shapeshifters. I was like, nice. That's cool. I didn't really understand what the path of the hand was before that. I guess it's something they follow so they can become ascendant. I don't know. I don't pay. It, I don't didn't try to figure it out too much then. But yeah, I love Fiddler. Fiddler is the, the Fiddler's basic. He's the closest thing the book has to like a hero. Like he's 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 yeah. the good guy. Um, yeah, most and when he pretends to be a Grawl, I love when he's protecting Absalar and um, Crocus as you know, no one gets close because he's one of those nasty tribesmen that just cuts your ear off for no reason. Well, let's talk about Chain of Dogs. That's a, that's our favorite, I think most of us. <laughs> um, Coltane, Duiker, I mean, even uh, Corporal List. Love that guy. <laughs> so, yes, uh, Corporal List who keeps <laughs> dying. Yeah, he died in all the He dies stuff. in all the war games. Oh, <laughs> List. <laughs> But I, I did find it interesting, I mean, to talk about a scene along with character here, because we'll start talking about individual scenes. Um, Coltane, for me, I liked him. And it was one of those that until I saw, was the was the character named Squint that had to kill him? At the yes. End? 
Yeah. Until yeah. I saw Squint's love for Coltane, I didn't understand I Coltane. And in that in that moment, that's when I understood Coltane as just this supreme leader that everybody loved. I mean, we saw all of his decisions just he was just he was basically successful of what he had to do, trying to bring all these refugees across the entire continent. I mean, he didn't survive yeah. it. The army didn't survive it, but a lot of the refugees did. And you kind of saw, for me, the moment with Squint was the moment that Coltane, for me, just elevated as far as a character that that I loved. Yeah. I agree. It's a moment yeah, where I, you see I, how... Yeah. I was going to say, it's a moment where you see like how much of an impact Coltane has on all the soldiers that you're not seeing on the through the direct conversations that like Diker and Duker is having with and Coltane are having with all the people um, and just how much like trust. And even if they're completely scared and don't believe that they're going to win or all these things that they're encountering along the way, just the fact that Coltane's there and how much faith they have in him and how like, you know, of a confidence, a morale booster he is for all the people that are in that, that chain of dogs uh, yeah, it really elevates, you know, my appreciation for Coltane. And that's why that entire scene is just like something probably, I mean, probably the mo the scene out of this book I am thinking about the most since finishing oh, it. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah so I, good. I, I feel like, I feel like uh, for somebody that's like hardly on the page at all, like we don't really get mm -hmm. a lot of interaction with him. His impact on the story was just like so it was like the, throughout the whole story, you just felt his impact. And like you were saying, like he just has this like aura about him that everyone reacts a certain way when he's around. And I did not see the, the ending coming, his ending at all. Like I, I didn't really know what to expect. I know everyone, everyone had said like this book gets emotional at the end. And I didn't get really like emotional, like I didn't cry or anything, but I was like absolutely shocked. I was like, that's not real right i was like he's not dead right <laughs> um but yeah i thought it was i thought it was really really impactful like his whole his whole storyline yeah i i wish that people would not and this is just books in general would talk about emotional endings like yes because yes it, I agree. Yes. It's completely I agree. like yes i it like, i read this you know no one i knew read fantasy so i read this and so I, Coltane at the beginning, it's like, fine. It's like, whatever. Like I'm like, I'm with the Malazans. Like, okay, we have this, this former savage, right. Who is now, uh, who has now been, you know, raised to one of the, you know, the top generals here in seven cities. Um, and you know, I'm like, whatever. But it, like, when I was done, I was like, holy crap. Like I have so much admiration for this guy because he is one, he's a conquered, he's a subjugated people. Like his people were conquered. He could easily, easily have just said, yeah, screw this Malazans. You're getting what's coming to you. But no, no, no. Like he has that. He was appointed a job and he has, uh, you know, he, he, he said he was going to do it. And by goodness, he's going to lead these people to freaking Aaron. Like he's going to get them to Aaron. And I knew this was going to be my favorite storyline when it started because fighting withdrawals I just are just awesome. Like I love, I love history and fighting withdrawals. I love battles because I love commander versus commander. Like how I love strategy in, in, in military engagements. And so at each subsequent battle, how they're going to get through it. And each time I was surprised because I like that Erickson doesn't let us in on the inner command of the tricks. Like Colting doesn't tell anybody beyond the need to know people What's going to happen? So when the entire riverbed, like, oh, that's so cool, literally is a yeah. crater because they freaking mined the entire riverbed, I'm just like, oh my gosh! Oh! <laughs> I'm sitting there waiting. I'm like, how are they going to get out of it? How are they going to get out of it? And so I'm just following, like, I'm just anxious reading the whole thing, following the fighting withdrawal, and they have no supplies. They shouldn't make it. People are dropping dead from starvation. you got these nobles who, there are always people who are just like, you know what? Like, they just don't have a concept of what is really going on. It's like, shut up. Like, you are literally one of the most useless people in this baggage train. So, no, you're not going to get all this stuff. And the fact that they are betrayed by their little dog pleases me to no end like the, the little noble dog is like i'm hanging out with the with whatever the 
the mongrel's name is. Um, and then we make it. Like, we're within sight of the walls. Oh. And we've all read fantasy. We've all read fantasy books. We've all watched TV shows, played video games, seen movies. They're within sight of the walls. Like, the excitement was, how are they going to do it? And then we make it to the walls, and we're like, yes, yes, yes. And I'm just, like, on the seat of my pants, like, yes, go, 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 then, go, go, go. And then High Lord Porn Paul refuses to go, refuses to go out. And I'm like, this I'm sorry. Guy. I'm like, like I'm going through what, what's happening on the ring. I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, and, and, you know, they're screaming at him. Like, um, Blistig is like, dude, like, dude. And he's like, no, no one can go. Sorry. And they shut the gates. And we watched wow. Wicker on the, on the battlements with Squint and all, and all the refugees that made it, that put their trust in Coltane, who has, like, like, and he is, he's strong the whole time. He, like, Coltane, it's not like Coltane doesn't feel for all these people that have died, all his kinsmen that have died, but Coltane knows he has to, this is who Coltane has to be. He must be this. Like, this is the ultimate, like, example of self-sacrifice. Like, he has become, you know, what, what all these people need. Without Coltane, they would not have made it. Like, they wouldn't have, even though they have plenty of other able commanders and plenty of, or they have other able commanders and, you know, these soldiers without Coltane as the glue that holds everybody together, they wouldn't have made it. And then we got to watch him. We're sitting there with Duiker being like, what the crap? And Blistig, what the crap? And Squints look. And we watch all yeah. of the freaking Wiccans make a last stand and are just slaughtered within sight of the walls. And... In back in 2008, I hadn't read, this is before like the advent of like the plot twist where everything was like, oh, dark and, and gritty and, and, you know, oh, no one is safe. You know, we had, we had Song of Ice and Fire, which, which we do understand that's there, but it was before like everyone is trying to subvert the tropes, right? Like that's mm -hmm. like, it, like the subversion of the trope is the trope now. <laughs> yeah. And having this guy gunned down, like you, that's not how this works. That's that's not how this works. I like I have remembered this moment for what the 15 years since 2008 that I read this because it hit me so powerfully. Like I will never forget having read that for the first time. Because and and so that like I understand when Coltane's not people's favorites. Like I get it. Like my love for Coltane is exaggerated by how powerful this moment was for me when I first read it. And with the people saying they're with Duiker watching it, like we're all Duiker. We're all the refugees that Coltane brought home watching this from the walls. And it's just, it's, it's indefensible. Like it's, I hate, oh, and Malik Rell. And this cemented my, and you're going to get like freaking apologists in the chat be like, well, Malik Rell, shut up. <laughs> I don't care. If you played Last of Us 2, I don't care how much you try to humanize the bad guy because of what the bad guy did. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what Malik Rell ever does afterwards. I don't care because of this particular instance. Unforgivable. Indefensible. And anyway, sorry. I definitely monopolized, but like I just <laughs> love – I just, I, I just love everything about it. Like, I, I love the tactics. I love how, you know, we're going um, through each of the battle. I love Corbelo Dom, who is um, overconfident, but in a better way. Like, I'm reading a military book right now where, you know, you have the generals who are always over, overconfident, and it just becomes like the stereotype. And it's like, but Corbelo Dom, like, you understand why he would think that he can crush them. Um, and then, you know, he's just beaten because he's, Corbelo Dom is, he's like Pompey versus Caesar. Caesar was adaptable and creative, and Pompey was a very conservative general. And that's what happens to, to Corbelo Dom. He plays it basically conservatively, the, the way that you would normally play it. And Coltane, you know, is going to be like, okay, well, this is what I expect them to do. How do we subvert what they're expecting? Anyway, sorry. I just love, I love the chain of dogs. Like that's what makes this book just so powerful for me. I loved, I loved in awesome. the Colton death scene as well, how um, just how well Erickson described. I mean, I could feel sure. the anguish of the soldiers that just wanted let out oh, to yes. go fight and to save him. And they wouldn't, 
because of their sense of duty. And yeah. that for me, that was heart wrenching because you, mm -hmm. they all just wanted and Erickson described it so well. That was for me, there was a, where was it up here? Show of hands, uh, emotional. I was a little emotional in that scene, seeing that and the, seeing all of the soldiers just wanting and wanting to get out there and help. And they couldn't because yeah. of form call and, Oh, screw Lord yeah. Pormqual. He get he got what oh he did. Oh my gosh! Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and squint, squint having having to fire the arrow was just like brutal. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's absolutely brutal. And you just feel like all like you were saying all of the anguish in all this. I just reread the description of it. Coltane looks up, sees the arrow, shatters his skull, and ugh, so good. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I mean, you were talking about how this is before like everything went, you know, Shut the up, subversion Jimmy. trope became the trope. And like, even though a song of fights and fire was out, like the, the show wasn't out yet. So if you're reading yeah. in 2008, like, you know, you're still a few years from the show, which for the vast majority of people that aren't like heavy readers of fantasy, yeah. they're, they're still expecting yeah. that like, Oh, you're there. You made it. This is what's going to happen next. And it's just like totally out of nowhere. And so what Elijah Burner is saying right here is that that's what I that's what I love a lot about mm -hmm. Malazan is when these things happen, like a lot of times people die and the story moves on and people are sad, but like there's a certain way, like like the way people reacted to Coltane's death in the book, like it was just so like realistic and yeah. Like it, it, it just it makes it all that much worse to see how the people he left behind or, you know, from his death felt about it. Uh, and I don't know. It's just it's just so good. Like Erickson is is really, really good at um, at, at at the consequences of, of these particular actions. Oh, yeah. And then everybody, yep. all the freaking. Oh, my gosh. Dying. Yeah. Hey, here's a good one. I just missed in the in the chat earlier. This scene. Oh, so that cool. was that was amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was one of my favorite scenes in the whole book when you realize that the sappers buried themselves. It's pop up. <laughs> amazing. I love it. I love the sappers. I I I not like Josh. I love military fantasy and I love some of the cool stuff that like some of the cool things they did throughout this. That's why I agree. Like Chain of Dogs was like some of my favorite because what like all of the cool military tactics they did that were just like so out of left field i was like this is awesome <laughs> yeah so cool so cool so cool uh sort of where do we want to go next uh what scene should we discuss next i got a list here um oh early reveal and someone asked it in the chat if we saw the foreshadowing in gardens of the moon and i'm answering absolutely not that dancer and Kalenved are oh, Cotillion no. and Shadow Throne. Oh, yeah. I, no. like, I, I didn't that came out of nowhere for me. Like, yeah, was there foreshadowing? No I, I missed that. <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of foreshadowing. When you read it back, I can't remember if I figured it out or not because I read the first two, like, close together, and I it's yeah. all blurred together. So I don't remember if I figured it out or not. Yeah, but when I went nice. back and read number one, there is a lot of foreshadowing, if you know that they are Cal and Bed and yeah. Dancer. Um, but I don't know if I got that beforehand because I don't, I don't think, I think it's hard to have predicted that without knowing how ascendancy works and, yeah. you know, although I still also, don't yeah. think I know how ascendancy works. Oh, I, I've, fin <laughs> I've, I've finished the series and don't know. Um, I just know that in book two, they told us that, <laughs> that, Kellen that and Dancer became them. Um, so it's like. Yeah, so it's I don't know. Like I don't know how I would have known beforehand without understanding how yeah. everything works. But you know, maybe some people are, uh, there are many people smarter than me. So yeah, I don't understand the ascendancy, cool and I still don't really understand the Warrens a lot, except that reality changes, and I don't I don't really understand the Warrens a whole lot. Every time uh, we get a it's warrant, like an I'm alternate. Just like, I'm just like, oh man, this is cool. Don't get it, but it's yeah, cool. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So I, you do. I, I, go ahead. It's is it just like an alternate, like a, I don't know. I it, think so. Portal, like in that, different, like you're in another different types of warrants or physical. Different types of I don't. You get yeah. more. 
like the, the the Warrens are finally explained like near the end of the series. And by that time, it's like, well, <laughs> this would have been helpful like eight books ago. But I mean, you get the gist as as yeah. you know. um it's I remember when I finally got explained to me, I'm like book one, book one, please. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so well, yeah, I mean there's it's there's a good compliment. The, you know, yeah, just that, that, that's there you go. That's what that's why I assumed. Yeah. Um it's just okay. there's really a one explained. scene like... the one scene it in the warren in where there's the uh is it a ship and they summon it and like call, call yeah we didn't dragon. talk about stormy and 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 gessler and uh yeah. oh yeah and all that stuff was rose, so cool the like the rose. uh yeah i loved all of that the imagery like when he called when Culp calls it the warren dragon or the warren dragon shows up above oh, and they're all looking so up at cool. it and just, yeah, that's all stuff that when I read it, I'm like, this is cool. I don't understand what is happening. <laughs> yeah, well, um, yeah I mean, there's definitely a lot I of that. I finished the series and still only kind of understand what's happening. So, but it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. It is definitely cool. And what's the other one? Truth? Is that the little guy? The little, the, the younger one? Truth? Is that his name? Mm-hmm. It's Stormy so. Gessler, Colt. Yeah. And then I think his name's Truth. I don't know. Sounds the, the young, The young Marine. Yeah, there's so. there's a few characters in this series. <laughs> there are many. That's what this is like. Persona. There's a comment that says, I, "I thought ascendancy is just you get ascended by sheer awesomeness." And I was like, "That's kind of <laughs> where like where I'm at in the series." I'm like, "If you're just la- have a huge impact on the world when you're living it in real life, you'll get ascended." Like, I don't know, Coltane or something. Um, war like, stuff okay, and would, like that makes sense. The more like metaphysical stuff and war and stuff. I have difficulty picturing things like this in my mind. And so when a lot of that it's happens, I'm just like, okay, like, cool. Like who's in here? Do I, do I know these people? Okay. Um, what is happening? Okay. I, okay, cool. And then later I'll be like, Hey, so what's going on? Like what, what is happening here? I'll find <laughs> yeah. someone like, you know, I'll be like, Hey, what's going on? And if it's if someone will be like, I have no idea. And then you'll ask Philip and he'll tell me. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's the metaphysical stuff is hard for me to yay. Oh Ian. <laughs> Ian has joined us. Yay. Yes. What a tumultuous day I've had, friends. <laughs> ah kids. <laughs> yeah, you all can relate, right? <laughs> no. No. Yeah. <laughs> As I was telling my wife, I was like, I don't know how to book two like these people with no kids, man. <laughs> I, I don't have that stamina. It's very impressive. I have, so. I have six younger siblings, but no kids. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a party teenagers who all whine from for whatever they need. Make you work it. Make you work it. Hush. But do they throw up on you? And if so, how often? <laughs> I have a student who's always on the verge of puking because she's a mess. And then she'll eat stuff that makes her throw up. I'm going to throw up. I'm like, why did you eat it? People who do that to themselves astound me. Like when they're like super lactose intolerant or things like that. And they're just like, I'll do it anyway. Yes. I'm like, you are going to feel terrible. Why are you eating this? Fool. I say that. And then I eat like a bunch of junk anyway. You know, it's not like I'm allergic to it, but I wish I was. (laughs) No, Alan, I say the same thing. I say I have 200 kids but at the end of the school day i leave and they go their way i go my way <laughs> other people's children you get emailed all yep. the time being like oh uh, uh, uh what's my grade my grade is bad how do i get my grade up <sighs> it's fun <laughs> so ian you weren't here for the intro the one of the things we did was we just gave our overall view of the book so what was your because you finished it the most recent out of all of us so yeah i finished it yesterday <laughs> oh very well. <laughs> yeah what are your, what are your yeah. thoughts um, so I want to preface this by saying I don't feel like I have – sorry, there's a fly and I am distracted. Um, I don't feel like I am have been in the right mindset for this series because I think you really do have to be in, like, the right mindset, be very focused, be very – like, I heard you guys talking. I was kind of, like, in and out on the stream, and you guys were talking about, like, utilizing the glossary and things like that. And sometimes I have time for that, and sometimes I just don't. And so I feel like I, I enjoyed my time with it. I got m- more of it than I did with Gardens of the Moon, I'll say. I think Gardens of the Moon is just 
there are so many abstract ideas that are just thrown at you and you're just like, yeah, I get you, man, but you don't get him, man, you know? Um, and with this one, I think I got more of it. And I think that this one is definitely more emotionally impactful. Like there was some freaking mess up stuff that happened. Um, and so it was definitely like a gut punch in that regard. I, at the same time though, I feel like I enjoy Gardens of the Moon maybe a little bit more. I don't know. Um, I think that upon reread, that might flip flop. I think upon reread, I would enjoy this one more. Um, but there were some things about this book that I really, really enjoyed. I liked the setting most of the time. I at, at, at other times, I just felt like it was kind of dragging, like in the middle and kind of stuff like that. I was just like, I feel like we've been in kind of similar settings for a long time. Uh, but I really loved some of the characters. Like I loved having, having Fiddler in this book. Um, and all of that story was very much, I, I think I watched your vlog, Josh, and you said it was kind of like an anchor for you at the beginning. I felt the same way. Um, but I also really enjoyed like Mappo and uh, his whole situation there. I thought that was really fascinating. Just reading about that, how like he knows all this stuff about his friend and like he's having to kind of like control him without controlling him and just kind of the fear and anticipation with that. Um, I'm very eager for future books with their story in particular. I think that is the thing I'm most excited about for future books. Um, I don't know that, I, if I'm correct, Memories of Ice is more of like a follow-up to Gardens of the Moon, right? Okay, so, yeah. so I don't know necessarily if we'll be seeing a whole lot of them in Memories of Ice or if that'll just be book four. But uh, overall, sorry, I've been all over the place. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed it. Uh, I don't feel, I feel like I need a little bit more time to settle on my rating for it. Um, agree with everybody though, the ending was just like bonkers. <laughs> like so much stuff happened. Like even um, this morning, like I was going back and I was just kind of like reading a recap of some of the chapters. And I was just like, oh my gosh, so much happened so fast. It was just crazy. I was doing that earlier too. And I was like, oh, I forgot about so much of this. So much happened yeah. in that book. You know, it's almost like I love reading it, but I wish that there was just like a really well done adaptation of this because just being able to visualize like some of the things that are actually happening, like the imagery and everything that's going on, yeah. it's hard for me to like More comprehend it. Yeah. Oh man. I saw some of the fan art and it, it blows my mind the the way that people depict this, but I'd love to just, I wish I had that in front of me as I was reading things mm -hmm. like an audio book with like visuals, things like that. So. Yeah. As, I'm um, that way sometimes for sure. as someone who loved, like it's one of my favorite series, but every single book has a section that drags for me that I'm just like, I don't, I don't care. Like, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, can we stop looking at this stuff or looking at our belly buttons or talking about <laughs> that or so help me if I hear the word Calic one more time. Like every book, every single book, except maybe Bone Hunters has a, um, <laughs> has a part where I like, you know, but there's still, it's still one of my favorite series just because of what Erickson like uh, uh, achieves with this and I don't even begin to understand everything that happens in these books. Like I just don't. And especially the yeah. stuff that's hard to picture Ian. Um, like, like I said, I can't picture, I can't picture half the crap that's going on. I understand the military engagements. Like that's what I understand. And that's what I'm reading. That's what I'm mostly reading for anyway. Um, mm -hmm. But like all the stuff that I'm just like, I don't know how to picture any of this. So yeah, let's, let me just pick an image and pretend it looks like that and let's move on. Um, but I get it. So yeah, I, I kind of just like know. smile and nod a lot. That's how I feel like yeah. I'm reading it, just smiling and nodding. There's a lot of oh. sand. Cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is great, man. Yeah, so I, I I sent it to the noobs when I found it. Um, I don't know if the, the people watching live here know about. There's a great slideshow that um, I think it's one of the guys that oh, does yeah. the Malazan podcast it's so good. put together. And that that really helped me because it did have some of that fan art and it helped me just picture some of these characters. Cause I'm naturally, I struggle with that anyway. I'm not real good at picturing things um, unless the author is just like the absolute best at that. Even then I kind of struggle. So seeing some of the fan art and I liked, so they had, uh, they had all these maps of the chain of dogs and just the, the, whoever did the art of it, it looked a lot like kind of like reading old civil war maps kind of the handwritten and it was mm -hmm. like Coltane's March second half and, and it showed all the troop movements and everything that really helped me visualize things just um, especially when they were <clears throat> running on different sides and there were different, um, you know, different features of the landscape rivers or whatnot. Um, 
helped me quite a bit. I enjoyed that. That slideshow helped me tremendously. After every chapter, I went and just went through the slides just to make sure I didn't miss anything on each chapter. Yeah, awesome. see, that's what I wish I had that level of commitment to the process and I'm working <laughs> on it. But like for me, it would be like I'd get through a handful of chapters and be like, I don't know what I just read. And then I'd go back and like try to read all the summary again. And then I get distracted by something else. And it's, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I want to be better about it though. So I really like this slideshow though. I've definitely looked through a lot of it. It's like 300 slides long. The level of commitment that Malaz and fans so have for like, I love that they're so like, they'll hold your hand through the whole process. Like they know, like there's so many resources for people because they know that it's not easy. But like at the same time, the people that put these together, I'm like, how do you, how do you do this? Like, how do you comprehend all of it? There's so much going on. And it's just like, I mean, it's truly impressive. The, the, the architecture of these books, you know, the way that Erickson just builds it all together and interweaves these mm -hmm. different plot lines and everything i mean which makes me very excited for like the crippled god especially like to see the culmination of all of these different things um and we see little bits of it obviously from book to book but i'm very excited to see how it all converges so me too so i, I jotted down some scenes that we can talk about here um so i want to ask you alan especially there was a scene that confused me at the end. So there's a scene where this trade guild from Jenna Bacchus shows up. Trigal, and Trigal trade. The Trigal guild. trade guild. And they're helping Coltane, but they were fighting against the bridge burners. And then I, I was confused about that. And I was confused about Dujek because it seemed like Dujek kind of, I don't know, he left the Empress's side, but it's, I couldn't understand if this is just so. Some... That's explained in book three. That's explained in book three. Okay, okay. That's what I was hoping because That's what I heard, the whole yeah. book, I'm I'm like reading this and I'm enjoying it. And then like the scene pops up and I'm like, okay, I don't know anything again. Yeah. The Dujek thing, <laughs> the, the Dujek thing's explained in detail in the next book. Okay, good. Because yeah. I know the Empress mentioned it at the end too. And I didn't know if she was just playing Kalam or what. So, okay. Well, that's good because that confused the hell out of me when I got to that part of the book. Yeah, I didn't understand it either. But book three explains it like okay. point blank. Thank goodness. Yeah, okay. I was kind of wondering the same thing, Josh. And I'm just very curious about what happens with everything involving Dujek in, in the following books. Yeah, Because, I mean, for, yeah, for other authors, like I feel like <laughs> the things that happen to do Jack would be kind of irreversible and that'd be kind of like the end of the line. But as we've learned with Erickson, he like with a whiskey Jack and, and the way that that story is kind of continuing in different ways. I'm just very curious to see what he does with, with all of that in book three. So that's good that we get answers next book. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't, I don't love, like, I like the Trigal trade guild in the earlier books. I don't like them. I don't like their storyline at all in the later books. Like it's one of the parts that I'm just like, oh my gosh, can I can this not be in this book? Like so that I can make this book shorter by not having I don't even understand its purpose. Um <laughs> but I mean yeah I mean they make there's a reason for them. I just I don't know. They have investors. So <laughs> they're just people that can they're like red from Shawshank Redemption. They're known to acquire things from time to time. <laughs> so happen to be what you need. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a, it's a little intimidating knowing that we really haven't read a chunker yet. <laughs> oh, the fact, that these, the fact that these are the short ones. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that that does memories of ice well. just a little bit. Memories of ice. This is a, at least 900, right? So that's the first. Yeah, chunker, and it's right? and it's yeah. still one of the short ones. Once you hit book, once you yeah, hit book six, like they're all like a thousand plus, like six through ten are like a thousand plus. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm trembling. We're gonna have to change this to one every four months. Or something. <laughs> that's, that's why one, one a year. <laughs> you well, guys that's are why being I'm like, if you're hitting one, if you think you're gonna hit one a month, like for we're doing one series. every two months. Oh, uh, okay, good. Well, they, there's yeah. at least one yeah. other group that's reading them right now, and they were like a book ahead of us. Are they still doing one a month? Fools. <laughs> I think Honestly, they. I, could. I think they still are. I'm not sure. Crazy. I'm not but sure. I was kind of like, I could do it for the first three or four, but I was like, just setting us up for failure. Because I, I mean, I like I have the mass markets of all the books, and like yes, Toll the Hound, Reaper's Gale, and stuff are like fourteen hundred pages. 
1400 yeah. pages and i'm they just are like too, I'm they, are, read that they are too long they are too yeah. long my, my problem right. is that i'm such a mood reader and these books <laughs> like it's such a long thing like if it was shorter i can make myself do it with no problem but like if it's a 1400 pages i'm gonna need two months to make sure the mood strikes me for, <laughs> for that long <laughs> and it's a struggle I like I I I just read them back to back before I had a channel, but I don't. It's the same thing with like Way of Kings. Like I don't want to have a wrap up and be like, "So guys, this month I read this book. That is <laughs> yeah. what I read, this, right? <laughs> this book." That's so, about to yeah. be my May well, because that's... I'm traveling for two weeks, and I I told Alex I was like, "I'll be lucky if I read three books in May because I I'm gonna I'm not gonna I'm just gonna read Memories of Ice." <laughs> I'm a slow reader as it is, so I like. This I mean, it's like before I had a channel, I was reading series straight through. So I feel like if I was reading Ooh, this Alex. without BookTube, <laughs> I would just be reading the series straight through because. Like Jimmy said, I mean, when you hit the end of one of these books, you want to pick up the next one. It's like very hard not to. And so yeah. it's actually hard for me to then go dive, be all like in the Malazan zone and then go read something totally different. Um, but now, I I mean, pros and cons, a lot of I don't people know. are saying just read it straight through. But many people, I would say the majority, um, are probably subject to burnout if you just yeah. if you were just reading like that is why I could never finish the series prior to booktube is i would just read malazan and then by the time like the farthest i made it before starting booktube was part way through toll the hounds and i just i'm just burned out i'm just like i gotta read something else like i gotta do something else um yeah uh, but then you know doing spacing it out after i started a booktube i was able to finish because i think i was on i was on the bone hunters when i started my channel so i just read like one every couple of months or something Mm-hmm. yeah i agree i i love they're saying i love reading stuff straight through so i love like trilogies and stuff i feel like i could still read those at least relatively yeah. straight through yeah Truth i used to be better about that and i really miss i miss just like getting into a series and not being able to put it down until it's done yeah, i can't too. remember the last yeah. time i did that like, let's all quit if... booktube and go back to enjoying <laughs> you yeah, know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i might be on to something there <laughs> The problem is, like, yeah, if you were to just push through this series and read them one after another, you'd basically become a Malazan booktuber for like eight months because it took you that long to finish. I mean, that's all okay. I read yeah. was Malazan, and that would be the next eight months. Yeah. My wrap up: I read half of one book. <laughs> Word, right? <laughs> So for my, um, I, I'm not doing reviews of the books. I'm just doing vlogs because I don't feel I'll, I'd be able to do a great justice to probably most of the books. I in definitely could. <laughs> uh, but one of my, one of my vlog entries, um, I'm going to start going spoilers from now on, but this one was a spoiler. I got to the end of the scene where the new Shaikh comes out of the desert. Oh yeah. And you're for a moment or for me overnight because i stopped there um for the night i wasn't sure if it was absalar or felicin was i the only one that w wasn't sure or um what do we think of that because i i enjoyed that i thought it was bit. i thought it was being set up for absalar um so i was i thought it was, it was being felicin, set up for absalar too yeah yeah i think you're supposed to yeah that's what i would have i knew i knew it was felicin but I was more shocked when they bring the holy book to Shaikh and then she gets shot in the head. And I was like, <laughs> yes. I was wait a minute. Hurt. What? I was like, whoa. Like, I didn't realize they were setting it up for a second Shaikh. I'm just like, what? 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 No. So who's running the rebellion? My head doesn't now? go there. <laughs> yeah. It really, it really says how much or how much happens in this book because I forgot that happens. <laughs> I mean, I did too until just now. It just a lot happens. You just get reminded of stuff. Yeah. Well, that's the thing going through the going through just the summaries. You see so much that you forgot. Yeah. That's oh, why yeah. I, I was doing that earlier. Oh, also, yeah. we, we need to at some point circle back to Duiker because we didn't actually talk about Duiker. I just waxed uh, like for 30 pages about Coltane. So we <laughs> That's true. We didn't really talk Coltane about it. Awesome. So, sorry, we can just circle back. It's not relevant right now. But No, let's do it now. Um, I liked Duiker a lot. I mean, he's kind I of do. our he's kind of our 
the reader's place in the army because he's yeah. not the soldier and he's in there. Mm-hmm. But then you find out later that he was a soldier and, you know, he, he takes out some people. And um, I, I enjoyed, I mean, I enjoyed his lens of seeing the chain of dogs through him. But then as we got more of his character, I enjoyed that quite a bit more as well. So I, I was a big, big fan. He was probably, probably my favorite character in this book. If I think about it. Wow. Yeah. I could see, I could I, see that. Cause I, Jordan, you go. Go ahead. Uh, I, I didn't love him at first because I was like, why? At first I was like, why are we, we have this cool army. We have all these cool people they're talking about. And we're following like the story. And I was like, can we follow somebody cooler? But then like, as we went on, I was like, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. And I did really like him by the end. But at first I was like, why are, why is he the one we're following? Um, but yeah, he grew on me a lot. I felt the same way. Yeah. Like I, I was like, I mean, he. I just didn't find his story very interesting. I was like, okay, this is a different perspective. I appreciate that, but I didn't get the significance, which I should have known, you know. But the more we found out about him, the more engaged I was. So yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. I do want to bring up in the, in the. Sorry, Alice, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say um, that I liked him from the start because he added. He was kind of our like as you were saying, our perspective into the whole Coltane storyline, but at the same time he was going into that storyline not believing that Coltane was going to be able to do this and like not really believing in everything that was going on around him and so he a lot in like us as the readers like d- watching Coltane for the first time and, and watching him grow on all these soldiers and ha- wa- learning how much of an impact he has on all these soldiers ha- how he impacts uh, Duiker along the way too uh, is really interesting. And I think someone brought up, Chris brought up uh, the children are dying quote. There's like a bunch of quotes like that where Duiker is just like questioning everything that's going on around him and how, and you know, even the stuff that like they themselves are doing or seeing um, is just, he's constantly questioning it. So he, he has a very introspective look at to at everything that's going on in the Coltane storyline, which is like, probably my favorite storyline in the book. And so I was really invested in it through Duiker for that reason. Yeah. I was, I was going to say the same thing about, you know, he's our window into Coltane and we see him put his trust in Coltane also. And that makes Mm -hmm. it, I guess, safe for us to put our trust in Coltane. So he like Coltane grows on us the same way it does on Duiker. And then we see how surprised Duiker is when, you know, the sappers pop out of the ground or the entire river is now a crater or whatever it is. And um, so, yeah, I, I love Duiker, but I love historian characters. I, the Black Company is another one of my favorite series. So I love analysts, um, <laughs> the people who write crap down. So I do want to bring up because uh, this scene here, the, well, the relationship, but one of the, one of the aspects of his relationship with the, with the female Marine, um, there was a scene in there that I understood. I've, I'd heard, Erickson say it and I'd heard a lot of people talk about how he as an author he thinks of himself as just kind of writing short stories in in this in these big novels and I know short stories the readers always have to infer a lot because they don't get all the details and there was a scene in the end of this that for me for the first time I saw that I understood that and for me I understood Erickson as an author, like that light bulb moment for me. It was a scene at the end where about a day before the chain of dogs meets its end and the female Marine comes back from a battle and she's all sliced up and everything. And Duiker looks at her and he says, you know, you don't need to go see the doctor or whatever, get those taken care of so you don't get infected. And she just gives him a look and that's the scene. And the look of course says, well, I'm going to be dead in a day. Who cares about a stupid infection? And it, a lesser author probably would have said that, would have given the dialogue there. And that little scene there for me gave me the glimpse of, okay, this is how Erickson tells his stories. And I, I love that scene because it was literally for me just my light bulb moment. It took toward the end of the second book for me to get there. That was for me the moment where I said, okay, now I, I, I understand this author and where he's, where he's coming from. Yeah. Nice. And I loved just to bring up another scene. The um, one of the emotional scenes at the end for me was, you know, she gives him the cloth and he never sees the cloth. 
And then after he's dead, they find the cloth and it has her name on it. You know, they had just this, these shared moments in the midst of this, you know, horrific war. And she just yeah. wanted to make sure he knew her name. It's like that, that hit me probably. Yeah, that got Almost me. as that much as, as Coltane's death. Yeah. 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 That whole storyline was just like, I think when everyone talks about the emotional weight of Dead House Gates, it's, they're mostly talking about Coltane and everything around that. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite things in fantasy is um, like explorations of loyalty and like leadership. Mm -hmm. And I've talked with Joanna extensively of this, like the loyalty that Coltane inspires. Like he, like he even gets a rival tribe, like, like the Kundral burn tier enemies, like Corbel Odom is trying to, is trying to use them or whatever, but, but Coltane inspires their loyalty and they, you know, they fight with the, with the chain of dogs. And, you know, because, um, because of Coltane's, uh, leadership and you see, you know, um, the, the people on the walls when they don't rush out to save Coltane because it's loyalty to the empire, loyalty to, you know, the chain of command when all I want them to do is just freaking stab Rel and Porm Qual right there and like <laughs> go do the right thing and go save these people. Like, screw you. Um, so we see that a lot in this series. And it's, 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 it is, it is the theme that I like the most. Um, more than the than the compassion thing um i just i like i love seeing the different kinds of loyalty and then the despicable people who are horrifically disloyal um i yeah. hate them um yeah. but yeah i mean you you see like uh, them being loyal to fiddler you know like sticking by fiddler as he's or fiddler's loyalty to to his word saying i'm gonna get you home i'm gonna get you kid home like you know um and that, that means a lot to me because I, as someone with a distended view of loyalty, probably is loyal to people way, way longer than he should be. Um, I would follow Coltane. So, yeah. There's like a, um, like looking at, I have this quote, not to bring out a quote, but I have a quote highlighted from when Coltane's talking to Duiker at the way, like towards the end of the book. And he's like, this tale this tale is your yours historian and right now no one is more important than you and if one day and if you one day see Dujek tell him so this it is not the empire's soldiers the empress cannot afford to lose it is its memory and that's like just his sheer loyalty to his goal of and this loyalty today has to the empire despite the fact that he's like not looked down upon he's kind of looked down upon within the empire and everyone else that's kind of a part a major player in it he's just still relentlessly loyal to it and is trying to share that message with with the historian and you kind of see that in a bunch of different areas throughout the whole book yeah. and that's a, that's another theme that kind of runs through the series is the idea of these things being witnessed or unwitnessed like all of these mm -hmm. great sacrifices and these 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 battles and these these struggles that are going um like who is who, like who is going to remember them i mean the whole series is called the malazan book of the fallen right like uh who is going to is going to bear witness to these things who's going to tell the story who lives who dies who I, was just who dies. <laughs> I was just thinking that <laughs> <laughs> Agreed, Eric. It's it, it is very it, th that loyalty, especially the loyalty among soldiers, is rife in Black Company. This makes me really want to try Black Company. Uh, everyone hates it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard. I, I have I heard some it. very mixed things. But... Everyone hates it. Book two is amazing. Yeah, I'll get there one day, maybe, probably. <laughs> or I'll if like read. I'll long. read book one, and then I'll forget about it, probably. <laughs> oh, I agree, Chris. I've, I've read the whole series multiple times. I love I love Black Company, but most people hate it. <laughs> Have you guys talked uh, talked about the epilogue yet? No. No. Nope. I don't no. even know what the epilogue is. Give me a second. What? Uh, <laughs> so there's that woman with the baby and or in the infant in her womb, and they're saying like it doesn't have a soul or whatever, and then the crows come down. Oh yeah. No, we didn't talk about that. And she feels it like stirring in her. 
Oh my gosh! I'm literally sitting here trying to remember what you're talking <laughs> oh, about. Oh wait, yeah, <laughs> y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead and y'all go ahead and just reread it out loud, and yeah, we'll, let me we'll talk it about really it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is they talk about the wiccan belief in like reincarnation and the soul being reborn it's heavily implied yeah there's a lot of that, that yeah that uh the soul of coltane is gonna be in this in this baby nice that's oh. what i was wondering if it would be coltane yeah who well, knows I mean, we that's kind cool. of got that who, with who knows, yeah. we, ha we haven't seen that really play out right. but we got that oh i said risky jack yeah you got that i meant to say tatter yeah, we did. Ugh, Silver Fox. <laughs> Sorry, I don't like, I don't like the the, the, the next book. It's the next book. It's, it's, <laughs> I was like, really, is that somebody really I should know? No, <laughs> no. But you, you saying Tattersail reminded me. I'm like, but we will, we will know. I like Tatter. I like yeah. Tattersail. <laughs> I love Absolutely. Tattersail. Yes, I love the Warlock kids. Neil and Nether and oh. Oh, who's I did the, too. Yeah. Who's the really powerful warlock? So, so, Sornak? What's his name? I don't know. Dramatis Personae. <laughs> All right. Sormo. Those were, Sormo. Um, Sormo Inath. Is that it? I was right. The, Sormo the, Inath. Mm. Sormo Inath. There he's were the like that, like, the different the types of characters. Of the land. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was going to say like the warlocks and then Map of Acarium and some of these other characters. That helped. I would literally go to um, Google Images just to make sure I didn't spoil anything, just so I could look up like what their basic picture was. Yeah, and that helped a lot, just because I was like, I just need to put something to these these character names, and because everyone's yeah. talking about all these characteristics they have, and I just like, I need to see a picture. <laughs> but that yeah, helps like for sure. It's it's easy to picture a Haboric. I mean, no hands, a yeah. bunch of tattoos. That's easy, but like a lot of the other ones are a lot more generic, a little. Well, tougher. the Wiccans are basically Native Americans. Like they're it's they're basically yeah. plain tribes, and um, yeah. So, and then the Trell are one of the many ogre slash orc looking things, uh, like the Jack. So, yeah. I don't know how the jag talk because this is them like i don't know how they're so <laughs> like <laughs> well spoken when they got their freaking jaws doing like, like this with a freaking tusk sticking out of their mouth yeah the like orcs in D, &D that's what i'm saying like how do, <laughs> they let like, their swords speak for them these people sitting there <laughs> waxing philosophical like aquarium's like have I been there before? Like that's what it sounds like. Well, well, they're probably not speaking English, so maybe they just utilize like different sounds or whatever. Maybe this is the first time I've ever thought about that. How you thinking about, about that all night? Mouth. I'm literally never gonna read this book the same now. Thank you. <laughs> Every time they talk, I'm gonna be like, "Holy, what Christ. are they saying? How is this working?" That's right. <laughs> <laughs> throwing shade at philip in the chat there <laughs> no it's because philip anytime you ask any question he'll say oh you need to read the novels of the malas and empire it's like philip stop stop equivocating and pointing people there <laughs> <laughs> just stop it's his life's goal <laughs> it is so yeah, the, the 10 is the 10 is enough at least for now <laughs> it is so many yeah and they're they're so thick i guess one thing we haven't talked about is just the generality of the characters how um I, what I've what I've liked is that there's no well except for the nobles um, there's no good guys or bad guys well I guess porn Paul so there's mostly no good guys or bad guys. <laughs> it seems like everybody is just yeah. I don't know a lot more three dimensional and it doesn't matter of which side you're kind of on it just seems like they're they're pretty real people for the most part and I know that's kind of his goal but I found that pretty interesting because it's been a tough kind of break, at least for me early on, like uh, in the first book in gardens of the moon for so long, I was thinking of Tayshren as this evil person. And then you get in his point of view and he's not evil. He's just trying to like survive what what's going on. I and, hate uh, Tayshren. Uh, I hate Tayshren. <laughs> I hate him so much. And people keep trying to make me not hate him. And I hate him. He's a douchebag. That's what he is. Well, Latine in the in the at the end of Dead House Gates, she was she kind of threw him under the bus and said that 
good. She wasn't trying to kill all the bridge burners. It was really the patron. So <clears throat> I guess we'll find out if that's true or not. That's why he must be punished. I hate you, Tayshran. <laughs> He's also, he's, also, he's also useless is the other is the other reason i'm like tayshran you suck you're a high mage and you suck you're like you're like assassins in every other fantasy book that literally can't kill anyone they're the like, best assassins, assassins in all the land they're they they're win. one goal <laughs> yes you have one job tayshran and it's to not suck and everyone in the chat's gonna be like, "I love Tatron. He's the best." <laughs> Tatron sucks. And they're they're all hitting backspace now because you just <laughs> <laughs> hate Tatron. Tatron peaked before Gardens of the Moon. Like he was, yeah. I mean, he did do that. That is the the worst. That was his peak. He peaked. He's just the worst. I anyway, don't know. I feel like most it. people I... like Tatron. I don't like him. I feel like this book is a lot less about like rooting for people and more about understanding why they're doing what they're doing, you know, because I think with most like traditional mm -hmm. stories and fantasies, there's very clear like, oh, root for this person. Yeah, they might make mistakes, but they're good at heart. And this is more, okay, everyone is doing what they're doing for some reason. And it's all about trying to figure out what those reasons are and to understand them, not necessarily agree with them. So. Everybody does some messed up crap in, in all of these books. It's just full of death and misery. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I've always, I always like fantasy that kind of shows you both sides and in a way that it doesn't feel like, oh, we're just trying to show you the other side to, you know, make you question what you thought originally. It's like there's a very good reason for showing both sides and he's fleshing both sides out well along the way, which is, I, I like to see that. And that's why, like, I also think that these books would be really beneficial on rereads, not just for, like, understanding what is actually happening, but because Erickson does, like, is so purposeful about, like, each character being fully fleshed out and having their own motivations and experiences and perspectives. And so, like, I feel like if you read a book, like, one of these books at a certain time, you'd really fixate on certain characters and certain things that happen and certain ideas. Well, if you read mm -hmm. this book, like, five years later, you might get a completely different yeah. experience out of it. Yeah, and I you agree. probably understand it a little bit more too. Yeah. I even think just like knowing what to expect of like basic plot structure. I feel like if you just knew kind of where the story's heading and it might make it easier on a reread to kind of focus on. Yeah. You can focus on other, other things. I on. think memories yeah. of ice is the easiest to understand in a first pass of the first three. Um, I think it's the most straightforward with the least amount of like, uh, like weird <laughs> abstract stuff that I'm just like, wait, what? Yeah. Um, so I've actually yeah. had like the temptation to read the wiki summary of a chapter and then read the chapter. And I don't know if that would just like completely <laughs> terrorize my experience, but like that way I know what I'm supposed to be. Alex yeah. turned into an orc. <laughs> His face <laughs> melted a little bit. He's a carrier. <laughs> <That's exactly laughs> I would do such a thing. Okay, because like because if 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 what we're supposed to be getting out of this book is more like the themes and and the ideas and things like that, obviously the plot matters, but it would almost help me to pick apart those themes a little bit better if I already knew like what was going on. You know, I could focus on like the intricacies of like the characters and what they're feeling and their motivations and all that jazz. You're being wonder... indoctrinated by the theme readers. Don't let them indoctrinate you. They've indoctrinated me. That's don't, what I feel like. They're like, no, you don't, it doesn't matter what I'm, happens. I'm, I'm here to right? rescue you. I'm here to, <laughs> I'm here to rescue you from the indoctrination. Don't, don't spoil the awesome plot beats. Like okay. for the theme. Like, what if I, what if I read the first half of the chapter summary to get my feet wet? <laughs> What's complicated way to read that? What if you read the book and then read the chapter summary or read the, what? read the chapter and then read the what chapter? What if I read, what if I read the chapters backwards, starting with the last chapter? That would be my way towards the beginning of the book. If you like the movie Memento, it's probably, you, you'd probably be all right. I'm on. I think, I think I'm going to go read back and Triple re God next. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Start with Triple will, God will, and work your way to Garden of the Moon. It'll it make no Just reread the books that precede it. Just reread the book that preceded it with every book. Actually, and so by the end, by the time you get to Crippled God, you've read Gardens of the Moon 10 times. You'll really. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to actually email really Erickson right. and ask for his first draft. And I'm just going to read that. There you go. The most raw experience I can get. It'll be great. <laughs> I can't support that, Ian. 
<laughs> I'm I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to get through this. All right. <laughs> I've heard I've heard from a lot of people that Memories of Ice is like a lot of people's favorite. I think it's a popular favorite for it is it is a very people. popular favorite. Yeah. So I don't know. I I'm excited for it for sure. Absolutely. And like Alex said, it, a lot of people say it's their the most e- the easiest to follow on the out of the first couple, which will help. Someone, you know, someone who literally wow. reread every previous book beforehand. That's wow. Cool. That's a lot. How do people have time? Like I've heard people that did that. With... It's non-booktubers. All right, it's non-booktubers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got yeah. to be. They don't have to get their content out. All right. Here's the thing: if I wasn't on BookTube, I wouldn't have the time to do that. I feel like though that there's some people that aren't super heavy readers, except like they have their one thing that they just read over and over and That's over. Like the and people so who have read Malazan fourteen times. Yes, and so yeah. it's probably one of those people. At They're like, oh, point, this is all I'm reading for the rest of my life. I don't understand series. that. Like, I love Malazan, I but I don't understand that as a concept. Like, there's just so much out there. Like, there's so many books I want to read. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Memories of Ice is in a lot of, is is in most people's top three. People love Memories of Ice. Nice. Now I'm even more excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. Now I've heard people doing a read like that with like current book series. Like so yeah, like if it's still coming out. Yeah. yeah. As yeah. the stuff comes yeah, out. But not for if sure. all the Let's books are already out, then you're just a yeah. yeah. Yeah, like and they're I, all like twelve hundred pages. <laughs> well, I will not yeah. do yeah. it if the book's like a thousand pages. But like these 300, 400 pages books, like I'll reread the, That's true. the first one before the second one, like right before the second one comes out. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I reread uh, Justice of Kings before Tyranny of Faith came out. Word. I, was, I, just I said I was going to do that, but I didn't. Justice of um, Kings is excellent. Did you like Tyranny of Faith? I did. Oh, good. I liked it a lot. So good. Such, so I really need to reread. Well, actually, there's a super in depth. Uh, summary of the Justice of Kings. That's what I read. I didn't reread it. I read the yeah. Summary on the website. Yeah. I just want to make sure I pick up on all of it because oh, so I good. know I'm going to love the Tyranny of Faith when I finally do read it. I've heard now, a lot of mixed reviews, but I loved it. What the Riddler is saying is that's what I did with Song of Ice and Fire and with the and with the Dark Tower is because I had caught up, so I had you know several years. Um, between book four of uh, Dark Tower and book five of Dark Tower, there was there were several years, and then we all know the release schedule of the books past Storm of Swords. So, my friend and I would always reread like before the next one came out, um, because you know it was like you know two three years in between or mm-hmm. eight years in between or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but when they're released every year, which I wish people would stop doing, like stop releasing a book every year. What if we waited two years? Between and then you've got self-pub authors like Chiago. Or we'll release like, like four three. or four. Philip Philip, Chase. Philip. Chase. Philip. Yeah, <laughs> all, all, all of mine within nine months. Philip. <laughs> I, 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 I'm waiting for, I'm not going to read it until I get the, the audio book because I got to hear your take on it. Audio going to be terrible. No, it's not. What, what, I'm gonna do listen. Do you to guys it. have any idea when it's coming out? Re-read. One star. I hope there are orcs in. It. I'm trying to remember. There aren't. But if there were orcs, I would literally only you talk can just, right there. You should just make one of the characters talk like that. <laughs> Say they have like a, a deformation on the face. Well, I, I've already told just... Philip the main character is. Hi, my name's D Raven, and I'm going to do a quest. <laughs> just, go. just. You just gotta tell Philip you made the artistic choice to make one of his characters. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's your discretion as the narrator. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, this yes. is crazy. All ten books were released between ninety nine and two thousand eleven. Yeah, that is madness. that is a that's lot. Madness. That's madness. That's like yeah, I didn't I didn't really realize when I started reading it that the last books weren't out. Um, I was just like, this looks cool. I'll read Gardens of the Moon, and then Deadhouse Gates was good. When I look yeah. back at how I chose what it. books I was going to read before BookTube, I would literally just go to the bookstore and pick up a book. I'd be like, this looks cool. I'm and now I'm like, I, I miss have that like, so much. <laughs> I have my months planned out so far in advance. <laughs> what are we doing on BookTube? <laughs> <laughs> Final thoughts. It's Anybody have any other, any other Dead House Gate stuff? No, I mean, it was good. I'm excited to get back to the characters. of. I'm, I'm excited to be in a book that's mostly, I mean, it's probably not going to be mostly familiar, 
but it's going to be somewhat familiar stepping into a book and being like, oh, I know some of these people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I really like, it. This know. is like... Jimmy, our own psyches force us to do it. You know, and Jimmy, you're you're one to talk. You also, Jimmy, acting my, like he like my he has no FOMO control. forces me to do it. No, I have Jimmy. to read everything everyone else is reading. I must. You know, I mean, I'm just mad because I beat him in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu like right before this this uh, this stream. I like just oh yeah, choke holding him. I'd be mad about where's that. Where's the too? video of that? I see that. That's yeah, right. where's the? I'd like to see Maybe that one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the second time I've defeated Jimmy in hand to hand combat. <laughs> Impressive. Y'all didn't have y'all didn't have Jimmy on your show because Jimmy is yeah, also have... a Malathan connoisseur. Yeah, we're gonna have oh, yeah, to pick a, which book he wants to do. Don't let him have bone hunters. <laughs> Are we all gonna fist fight? No bone hunters. <laughs> really I will say I, I like this book a lot. I think um one of the things that of the, the series that sold to you before you ever start and like you'll hear over and over again on booktube is just how the books aren't super linear in any like other series where you're kind of bounced between different characters and stuff throughout um and so this was like the first experience of that going from gardens of the moon to this one and so i think i like i really enjoyed it so i feel like because i liked it here i will like it down the road when it gets maybe more convoluted and there's more hopping back and forth between uh, all the different characters and stuff. You know, one of the things that surprised me, I, I think going in, people don't call this a character focused story because you don't follow the same set of characters through the 10 books. And I the guess theme, I incorrectly the looked at that. Yeah, I, I incorrectly looked at that thinking that that meant that it, there wouldn't be great characters. <laughs> so I don't know why. Um, but uh, it's it's been great in both of these books, but especially in this book, having some characters that, that I love and hope to see again, but knowing that if I don't, uh, I'll see some brand new ones for sure. But um, that's been a, a nice surprise for me because I am a character first type of reader. I am too. Same. There is a, um, a new character introduced in three that I really like Two, I think there's a couple that I really like in three. Um, but I was also happy to return to the gardens of the moon cast um, yeah. but I think like I on reread, cast. I think I enjoyed the seven cities books more. I don't really know why. Um, it might've been different on the first read, but, but yeah, the characters are really good. The the good ones are really good. And then some of them I just hate. So. Pussed. That's how it's supposed to be. His name is bad. His name is bad. <laughs> <Don't like laughs> it. It's it's you're set up to not like him because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Who? Who are you yeah. not supposed to like? Pussed. Pussed. <laughs> yeah. I hate pussed. His name is just, I just don't like saying it. I know. It's girl pussed. Or some people say pussed. It's girl pussed. <laughs> it's girl pussed. <laughs> what do you say? They're both bad. It's well, yeah, it's say, really it, well say it doesn't well. work, though. Her. <laughs> 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 if girl, if girl, park. <laughs> all right, our next thumbnail is gonna be all of us doing an orc face. <laughs> I love it. How yes. do they talk? <laughs> they got people them. They're having they deep whistle. philosophical conversations. <laughs> <laughs> what is the meaning of our existence? <laughs> do we have free will? <laughs> It's ridiculous, but it's a gross name. (laughs) That's a hot take. (laughs) I like Krupp. I don't like Puzz. (laughs) I'm certain short for Pustule. (laughs) Iskerl Pustule. (laughs) Iskerl Seeping Wound. (laughs) (laughs) Gross. Well, I guess any more final thoughts that we have or how we're feeling about the series at this point? I guess Thanks just for going me. forward. I'm just excited. I'm excited. I'm excited, especially if Memories of Ice is going to be a little easier to digest. Yeah. I'm excited to like feel like I have my footing for the first time because a lot of people said that Deadhouse Gates was less confusing than Gardens of the Moon. At the beginning, I was more confused than I was I in Gardens of the Moon. There were parts I had, of, yeah. I had no idea what was going on for like the first half of the book. I was, and it wasn't just because we were with new characters. I found it more confusing. But 
I'm excited to have my footing. A little bit. Yeah. I feel the same. I'm also scared, but it'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm we really share our fears. I've been anything over four hundred yeah. pages, I start trembling. So a thousand four hundred pages is gonna be really exciting. I'm reading so many chunkers right now and I'm like, when I need I need some novellas in here. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Well, I've been reading uh, Narnia next to Malazan, and that's been that's been a fun contrast. <laughs> yeah, that's a I'm great trying contrast. to throw in some, I'm trying to throw in some Dresden. There you and go. Dresden, that's been good for me film. for sure. And I've been uh, reading uh, um, The Legend of Drist, and those are great because they're like really short and easy to throw Dang. in. Nice. I'm reading that's my great. first uh, Discworld this month. So that'll be a nice review. Hey, that's a good contrast. Your first Discworld? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to start Discworld. I've Which never one? read Discworld I've, either. Okay. I've only read so one. I was, I was going to do more as my first, um, but then I'm doing this readathon, and the color of magic fits one of the prompts. So I was thinking about starting with that. But then everybody also wants me to do Guards Guard. So I don't know. <laughs> guards Guard is where I want to actually start. I've read Pyramids, but I want to. You've read the worst one. <laughs> I know. You've read one of them, and it's the worst. <laughs> pyramids. I... It was a, it was a read along. Right. I <laughs> hate pyramids. pyramids. A pill from here, bro. It was it's my a, only an one star book. Discworld book. I despise it. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what have you done? <laughs> anyway, I like chaos. they're all good, except pyramids. <laughs> I gotta start. I gotta start that too. I'll Don't do guards, guards. First. Yeah, that's what I want to do next. I'm trying to read all thirty-seven Legends of Drist. So one day. Good lord. I read through ten thousand orcs and then stopped because I was like, I've read a bunch of these. I'm only two in, so I've got a long way to go. <laughs> is, is two streams of silver or exile? No, uh, exile. Exile. Okay. It was good. It was good. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah. yeah, excited yeah. for memory survives. <laughs> excited for memory survives. <laughs> when are you, when are you guys reading are... it? Josh, when are you reading it? Um, probably, I'll start. It's it's not in April. It'll definitely be May. Um, probably yeah. first thing in the month. Uh, it depends. Actually, I'm Alan and Kyle and I are doing Taipan straddled over the month. Oh, yeah. So, I, was, um, I was contemplating, yeah. Yeah, so um, it, it kind of depends whether I like feel like I really want to finish that at the beginning of May or if I do memory, Memories of Ice first. I think but, I'm going to read Taipan yeah. end of April and then second half beginning of May just to kind of yeah blow into it. Uh, keep I together. think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start beginning of May because I have a 14-hour flight. And so I'm going to try to like knock out a big chunk of it on the flight. I'm going to try. We'll see. Oh yeah, we got to take notes because you're going to be in Japan in May, and I'm going in June. So yeah, yeah. What? Why are y'all going? Right, to every, every, it's My a husband's book Japanese. Rule. We got to. We got to. We got to go see his grandma. He hasn't seen her in ten years. So what? Yeah. Where? Where are you going? I need, I need one of those. Uh, outside Tokyo. Dang, Josh, She's why are great. you going? Vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, man, I'm so I'm so envious. I want, no, I'm going to go to like, dying to go to Japan. I would love probably going to, so like, to Super Target next week, so that'll be a fun vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really afford it, nice. but I'm going to go anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I might go to Barnes and Noble instead of half price books. Who knows? I mean, ooh, big spender. Guys, the limit. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So, Ian, are you? Are you, I know you're you're mood reading, but are you going to start probably about the beginning of May? It sounds probably. Like I'm going to try not to wait until the day before the live stream to think <laughs> this time. But I don't know. I, ask me again in a week, I guess. <laughs> Alan, has your uh, Alchemy of Mass to Mirrors read along started yet? Is, is I mean, yes, but I haven't read it yet. Okay, I was going to say I wanted to join on that, and I couldn't remember if it was starting this month or next month. Do it. It, it starts next month. this month. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Okay. I'll do it. <laughs> so I'll do that then. I may start it after. I don't know. It depends on how far along I get in this readathon because there's 20 prompts for it and I want my team to win. You so, readathon right. people are crazy. Uh, this is a Only for this one. month. First I'm going to be a lot slower next month. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward <laughs> to slowing down. So. Wow. Got my 2.5 to 2.75 audiobook speed going. I'm ready to win. Holy moly. Yeah, don't yeah, recommend I'm... don't recommend that for Malazan. 
but oh, I could no, no, no. <laughs> I can't do, I can't even do the audio. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Joanna and Chris and everybody else in the chat. Um, I think we've we've gone through everything that we'll probably go through in the book, but it sounds like all of us are very excited to be reading. Um, Memories of Ice over April and May. If you want to talk with us, come hang out in the Grimoire. That's uh, Alex's and a host of others. Um, Discord. We have a read along channel there, and it's been a lot of fun just discussing that. I know every time I get confused, I just have to post a question there, and somebody answers it for me. So uh, yeah, I want to thank really all of my guests here, my my uh, current my fellow noobs, Ian and Jordan and Alex. And we'd like to thank Alan for joining us and lending his expertise with Dead House Gates. And once again, I want to thank all of you in the chats. Uh, we're going to sign off and I look forward to uh, seeing all of you in our comment sections as well as our uh, Discord and all of that. So take care. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs>